Hey folks, my name's Chris Wessel. Today we're going to be tying a bucktail hollowed bodied squid pattern. This thing is super cool looking and it's one of those species that almost everything worthwhile catching in the ocean feeds on. It's going to be a long video, almost should have done it in a two part series, but if you got time to sit through this, I think you're going to find it pretty cool. Without further ado, let's get on into it. All right, guys, uh, this is going to be a bit of a longer video today. I apologize for that, um, but I really just can't tie these quickly. So um, the first thing we're going to start off with today is a uh, shank piece. And I believe this is a 15 millimeter. And we're going to use a UTC 140 today in a white. Um, you want to use strong thread for these. I really struggled with if I was going to do this video or not because I knew how long it was going to take so my apologies so um, today or not today sorry the next thing we're going to use is I'm going to use this um, white pearl silver dubbing from loop tackle um, put a little bit of wax on my thread first I'm going to use this basically to make a little bit of a dubbing ball uh, on this shank before I put the tentacles on because it'll help keep those tentacles just kind of splayed out a little bit, I think. And we're going to go a little bit bigger than that. ourselves a little bit of space up here. So for our tentacles today we're going to be using a rooster saddle and we're going to come down and try to pick out maybe some of the webbier ones and I'm going to try to pick out uh, like six of them maybe. some at different length and one a couple shorter and then the rest longer. Alright, so I'll start with my shorter ones first. I'm going to pick out um, maybe thicker ones for those. This guy for sure. I'm not going to get too crazy with trying to make this really pretty, guys. It's uh, it's not going to be looked at that hard, I don't think, from the things that would eat this. And our second one. Put on the other side. Those will be our smaller tentacles. Let's put on some longer ones now. I do recommend one thing um, before you do this is to wash the feathers you're going to be using with like a Dawn soap. And that's uh, Really only if you intend on using a Sharpie marker like we're going to do in a minute on these to just put some spots on them. And 
And I'm going to bring that down right to the dubbing ball. And it gives it kind of a nice, nice little splay. Alright. So we can choose to probably do this now, but I'm just going to come in. I wanted some hints of uh, pink in these feathers, but like a barring. These will likely come off when they hit some <clears throat> salt water because uh, I didn't wash this with Dawn soap first to degrease the feather, so it's likely not going to stay on that well. But this will give you the idea. Just make sure you wash your feather. I'm going to come in with a brown then, and I'm just <clears throat> putting in um, some spots. Just kind of giving it that squid kind of look. You can use what other colors you like. You may find ones work better. I don't really know because I haven't used this pattern. And on the underside as well. Not going to be too technical with it. That should work. Okay, so um, the next piece we have to do here is we need to put an eye on this. So I'm going to put on another dubbing ball above our feathers there. Now this dubbing ball is going to be very well hidden and kind of tacked down with epoxy. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. So. Um, don't get too crazy with brushing this out or anything, I wouldn't say, because it's really not going to matter. Honestly, I could have probably have went with a 20 or even 25 mil shank for this. I'm kind of strapped for a little bit of room here, but we'll make it work, guys. So this dubbing ball is basically going to be here to give us um, an area that we can have our eyes uh, glued and epoxied to instead of just a bare shank. And I'm just going to touch that with a little bit of head cement there on that whip finish I did. My bottle is gummed up again. Whenever these uh, needle nose bottles are gummed up, it's almost nine times out of ten, it's right at the um, the surface or the the top of it. So if you just stick a needle in there, it'll clear it up. Okay, now we're going to be using these eyes. Uh, they're really, really big. This pattern is really so far the only use I've had for these. Um, basically, I'm just going to turn this. It really doesn't matter what side you put these on, but we're going to choose to do it like that. And I'm just using a little bit of LePage uh, Super Glue. Um, it's a gel formula. And just hold that there for a second. Now these eyes are already sticky, but really the LePage can hurt. Or the Super Glue can hurt putting a little bit of that on there too. I'm not sure how well those eyes are going to stand up anyway. And if I lose them on a big fish that eats squid, I think I'm going to be okay with that as well. Alright, so we got that part done. Now we're going to come in with an epoxy. Today I'm just going to use the Golf Classic. Uh, a flex may be a little bit more appropriate for this, but I don't think that big of a deal. I need to be careful here not to cover up the eye of my shank. And we're just putting in enough to fill up the gap that's left between the dubbing ball and the edge of these eyes. So let's go ahead and cure that one first. And 
we'll go ahead on the other side here now. And we're just filling in that gap while not trying to cover up our eye of our shank. And that gives us a really solid uh, base for the eyes to be on. And even adds a little bit of weight to this as well. That's pretty sturdy. Okay, so our next thing is I'm taking some intruder wire today. Um, on the ones I've tied in the past, I've used uh, 30 pound mono, um, but today we're gonna go with uh, intruder wire and I'm gonna totally ruin these scissors doing it, I'm sure. And intruder wire should make this uh, a little bit more bulletproof when it gets a grab. And we're just gonna take this out of our vise and let's just put that down here for now. So our hook is um, gonna be an ADOT Partridge Predator Universal X. Um, very, very, very strong hook and we're using a big one too, so. I don't suspect any issues. I really, for the first time in a very long time, can say that maybe I should have used my big game jaws here. Um, I really wish I left myself a little bit more wire, but we'll make sure that we put that in, in a way that uh, it'll hold up even with that little bit. Really, my wire should have come right up here. Let's see what we can do though. So we'll get a good base down. That's definitely the length I think I would like there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to curl these wires down over. That'll help hold that in. And I'm going to also put some super glue on this. And hopefully that, uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be good. But leave yourself a little bit more wire than what I did there when you're doing this. Not going to be shy with this glue either. The guy I talked to about um, this pattern online, um, he said that in salt water he's using this as a strip stop method, and he said um, you'll notice it when you have the fly close to you in the water that when you stop you'll get these tentacles kind of splay out a bit sometimes and that's really giving it a lot of action that you're looking for in the water. Alright so we'll come on up here right about there I'd say and we're going to go to our bucktail now. Now this first little bit of bucktail um, will be the only part that we're not going to reverse tie in a hollow manner. So we're going to use this thicker stuff down bottom. It's going to give it a little bit of flare. And I probably could have chose a better background than white. but Alright, so we just want this to kind of just set over the eyes on this and we're doing a few loose wraps to begin with and my fingers are getting stuck to the fly oh that stuff is uh, strong and now we can kind of chinch down and tie in tighter and that's just going to kind of be a base material for our fly this um, bucktail is going to be our uh, funnel of the squid. Has really nice movement in the water. Now we're going to go with a uh, flash 
blend. It's a crinkle flash bent blend. It's a Steve Ferrars uh, flash blend made by Just Add H2O. If anybody knows me, they know I'm a big fan of Just Add H2O product. And um, we don't want to get too crazy with covering that eye, so I'm time flashing on one side with two turns, and I'm just going to kind of flatten that down so it spreads around a little bit on that side. And I'm going to come over and cover the other side now. And another push just to kind of flatten that and move it around a bit. And we're going to just kind of cut that off in a taper. Save that stuff we just threw down on the paper there because we could probably reuse some of that. And that's just a little bit of flash there. Uh, this extra bucktail, I kind of left a little bit too much there. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to tie over top of that with another <clears throat> layer of bucktail. And we're going to come up the bucktail this time. And we're going to take uh, some from here. You don't want to take a lot, guys, because if you're looking at uh, this shank, we have a lot of bucktail to tie in here. So if you take too much, you're going to bulk this fly up way more than it needs to be. And... We're going to take this now and we're just going to kind of hand stack it and then all that is is you're pulling out the fibers and lining them up on your desk. Oh, I really wish I would have chosen a better background here. I'm even having a hard time seeing it. And we'll size up where we want to be. And, you know, I think we'll do um, a layer over the eye again because... We haven't really covered that up too much. And a very loose wrap, and all we're doing is just pushing that around the hook. Now we do a tighter wrap. Ooh. Oh my, that was close. And we're gonna use our push tool today. I'm using a pen casing. Come down over and just coaxing that stuff to flare out and we want to make sure we got pretty good coverage around and just use your fingers to pinch that like so and we're going to create a bit of a thread dam there And I'm going to also put in a little bit of this glue to just reinforce our dam. Guys, if you're looking for a really strong super glue, man, that LePage stuff is insane. Alright, so we're going to come back up. And this time I want to add in a pink layer and I want to do it down here because I want this pink to be subtle in the entire uh, funnel of this squid. So if I put my pink in now here or even down here for that matter, um, this pink is going to be covered up by the white that we're going to eventually come in over top with and it won't be like super prominent but it's just enough there to kind of match the pinks that we put through the tentacles. So I'm going to choose some from near the top of the bucktail. And we're going to do that hand stacking again. You can see this a little bit better. There we go. Oof. You don't want a perfect stack with this because like, it should be tapered a little bit, but we'll do a little. And then you just kind of line up where you want it. Let's do another uh, layer that covers the eye a little bit. And I think we're going to be good then for eye covering. So all I'm doing there is I'm just cutting that off, having a nice straight cut end to work with. And I'm going to hold on to my cut end, come in, put a wrap, 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 but these are loose wraps. 
because now we're going to move this, manipulate this around the shank of the uh, hook. Have a good look around. Yeah, that's good. Now it's time to chinch down and put some beef on it. And we can use a little bit of our super glue again. It's all about making these flies durable. And we're just coming in with our tool again. And just kind of trying to splay that out. And I do this a couple times just for any um, pieces that may be trapped down. Like this really just kind of gets them splayed out the way they should be. And we come down here and we start another thread dam. The thread dam, between the thread dam and then you're pinching these fibers down. And to be honest, if I'm taking photos of these flies, I'm running this fly under hot water afterwards and uh, kind of gets your bucktail having a memory of where you want it to go instead of where it wants to go. As soon as this gets wet and pulled through the water a few times, it's going to hold the shape you want anyway. But if you're going for that hero shot uh, on social media, and I'm not making fun by any means, because <laughs> I am I'm looking for a good shot of a fly that I spent a lot of time on, then you can run it under hot water, let it dry, and then take a photo. So that's our thread dam there. All right, we're rolling. So we're going to come up a bit further again, and we're going to go back to our white again. Now we're going to start looking at this thinner stuff, less hollow stuff near the tip. Again, you're not looking for too much. This looks like a lot, but I'm going to be pulling some out of this too. So again, we're just hand stacking, take the tips, tips, and this stuff's probably a little bit too short to work with, so we throw that away. And I'm just coming up and cutting that. And a couple loose wraps. Cut off that extra there and manipulate that around the shank again. Then we go tighter and I miss some fibers as you can see. It's all right, it's not a big deal. Could have laid down some glue there too, but I'll put some on my thread dam. And you can see that pink starting to already fade out a bit. When it gets wet, that'll be a little bit more prominent as well. Looking good. So now um, I think I'm going to add a little bit more flash to this. One thing about flash in these flies, like you don't know if it's actually putting the fish off or attracting them. Um, that's kind of the crappy part about it. But uh, like on a lot of bucktail flies, you can actually trim your flash off if you think that's what's kind of shying them away. Um, that'll be harder to do on this one. Let's just assume the fish want a bit of flash here. So I'm just covering uh, the two sides that I didn't really cover with the last time I put flash on. And you're just kind of using your fingers to manipulate, manipulate that around a bit. Pull those fibers back, trap them. Yeah, I'm liking that. And we go with some more white bucktail.
believe it or not, I'm actually going through this a lot quicker than I thought I would. And we're just going to hand stack those. I'm going to just hold it up here and pull out any short fibers I may have there. And let's create a uh, nice little cut end for us to work with. Loose wraps, three, manipulate around the shank, and we didn't reinforce the last one, we're going to do that with this one. I can only imagine that anything that's going to be eaten, something this big, especially in salt water, um, maybe a bit toothy. So, having the uh, glue on there is not a terrible idea. Pull out anything that may be loose. And we're just splaying that out. That was nice. That went down nice, that layer. I'm happy with that. And we're just kind of pushing. And a lot of that glue I can feel up on this thread dam bled through, so I won't need to put any more on. I'll just use what's there. And we're going to put on one more. Put on a nice light layer. Again, from the tip. And let's pull out some of those shorter fibers right off the bat this time. And we're just going to hand stack that. You have no idea how bad it drives me nuts that I didn't put down a black background for this. Alright. So we don't have a ton of space up here, so we're just going to try to work within what we have. We'll still have lots for a head though. Um, same as the last one, we're just moving that around. Let's get that around the shank. And let's go ahead and chinch down and tie that in stronger, harder, more pressure. One of those words I'm looking for. And we just hold those down. While we bring our thread through the deer. And I'm just kind of pushing down on that, trying to get it folded over nicely. Alright, I'm going to put a little bit of um, super glue on that again. That's a good head. I should do. Kind of fold it down over my bucktail a bit and that'll pin it down, but then the body will kind of prop it up again. So, not too worried about that. And we're just going to whip finish. Oops. Alright, now for a uh, little bit of head cement, or you can use epoxy, but as so guys, I really apologize, my camera turned off on me right before we um, kind of finished tying this in, there wasn't any more material added, but what we did do was we came down over the body with um, some brown accents, as you can see when I do that, 
and uh, just a tiny bit of pink. We didn't have to put a lot in because we already have that pink underneath. I didn't want to fin finish the video like that, so I'm just coming in and recording this now. Um, I do want to thank you all for watching. I know this was a long video, but they are super cool patterns. And um, if you ever wanted to sit down and just try something new, this is a great one to try. Thank you all very much for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, um, I'd really appreciate it if you did. It helps me out. If not, totally cool too. Just happy to have you along. Until I see you next time, uh, take care.